light fog hung over the water surface of the river. Night birds chirped from the darkness, and cicadas played along with them by chirping. Twilight is a great time to go fishing. Few people go out fishing at this time, which is what Simon took advantage of. In such moments, you can truly relax and enjoy the atmosphere of nature. And most importantly, a good catch. Before launching the boat, Simon scanned the water's surface. The fry played at the bottom and timidly swam to the shore. Lightly touch the transparent surface, and they will run in different directions. Later, too, since the boat was now moving, Simon jumped into it and swam deep into the river. A light breeze blew into my back, causing hundreds of goosebumps to run down my spine. The guy shuddered. I wrapped myself tighter in my warm jacket. Having sailed far enough from the shore, Simon took up the fishing rod. On the first run, we didn't have to wait long. After a couple of minutes, the fish bit the bait. A good old worm with a special additive always helps. The second time I threw it in. This time, I had to wait a little longer. The fishing went great. Half the bucket is already filled. Another one is ready. Simon got excited, forgot about time, and not only that, he was so engrossed in fishing that all he could think about was the fish in the river which had no end or edge. He didn't even notice how a strange-looking fish swam up to his boat. Very large in size, roundish in shape, and angular sides in the head. It resembled something like a human. As soon as Simon looked overboard to wash his hands, the strange fish swam away. The guy noticed this and began to peer into the water, but that fish was no longer visible. It must have seemed, he thought, taking up the fishing rod again. And as soon as I cast it, this fish suddenly jumped out of the water, grabbing Simon's hand. The guy screamed, grabbed the creature by the tail, and began to pull, but it did not give in. The teeth were so deeply embedded in the flesh that it was impossible to tear them off. I had to use my fists. After several blows, the fish flew off the hand, hit the side of the boat, and sank into the water. Blood flowed abundantly from the hand, falling in streams onto the surface of the water, thereby luring even more of these creatures. Simon clutched the wound tightly. So, of course, you can't stop the bleeding. I had to sacrifice the sleeve of my jacket so that the bleeding would no longer bother me. All that remains is to choose from here. He didn't have time to swim a couple of meters before they attacked him again. This time, three fish bit through his flesh. All three monsters targeted his forearms, forcing him to let go of the oars. The body convulsed. The pain kept growing. Simon, unable to fight off the river creatures, began to fight against the sides of the boat. They, although not immediately, got unstuck, taking pieces of flesh with them. Simon fell to the bottom of the boat, screaming loudly, but no one heard him. Even more creatures arrived. A whole flock, several dozen of these creatures, gathered for the catch. They jumped out of the water, flying over the boat. The guy could only defend himself, slightly raising his bleeding hands. When one of these fish was on board, Simon quickly grabbed an oar, sat down and crushed its head with a few blows. Rising with difficulty, he began to swing the oar, driving away the monsters, and there were more and more of them, several dozen to a whole hundred. It is now impossible to fight off such a horde. The oar broke due to such a battle. It soon became quiet as Simon grabbed the second oar. Water monsters stopped terrorizing the guy. Simon stood on alert for a minute until the tension in his body subsided. While there is time, we must sail away. It was quite difficult with one oar. Swimming was impossible. My hands hurt terribly. It's still a long way to the shore. The guy hoped that someone would hear him, but again there was emptiness. His listener to his plea for help. Simon was completely desperate, which made him grab his head and cry. He will have to sit in the middle of the river until the morning hoping that someone will find him during the day. Suddenly the water began to boil in front of the bow of the boat. Simon noticed this. Each time the bubbles became larger 
a small wave appeared in that place and headed towards the boat, increasing in size. This wave turned out to be very unusual. Those creatures approached their victim like a hull wall, raising the water flow. Simon covered himself with his hands, although he knew that this was unlikely to help him. The wave of their river monsters covered him, swallowing him along with the boat. Two fishermen found the guy's body the next day floating on the surface of the water. They noticed his gnawed, scarlet back with a protruding spine. The fishermen dropped their fishing rods and ran to call someone. Meanwhile, several of those creatures swam closer to the shore, 